Happy Thursday folks, welcome to unit 16 where we're going to be discussing how to write a method section and methods writing in general. Uh, this is a relatively short lecture which is great so we can end off our Thursday afternoon pretty early. For our objectives today, all we're going to be talking about is how we write a method section. And within a method section, we have three essential pieces that we need to abide by. In a method section, there's always writing about participants, your materials, and your design or procedures. Oftentimes, there's more than that to a method section, but these are the three basic components that you need to talk about in a method section. So, some things when you talk about now, is a method section, is it Present tense, future tense, or past tense? Um, do you place your hypotheses in the measure section, in the method section? What are the essential sections and what's the essential info? Well, I can tell you that for the most part in a scientific paper, method sections are written always in past tense. However, for the purposes of this class, because you're writing me a research proposal, your method section will actually be in future tense. So note that down. If you're watching this video, your method section will be in future tense. Um, this is going to go different than you would in a read in the APA manual per se, but that's because in this class we're writing a research proposal, not a scientific report. Therefore, I repeat again, your method section should be written in future tense. Um, are there hypotheses in the, in the uh, method section? No, because you should have, have already have your hypotheses in the introduction section. Oftentimes I see this as a mistake. People write their hypotheses in the method section. Your hypotheses are not a method. Your hypotheses are an essential component to an introduction to set up the rest of your paper. So it goes in the introduction se um, section. Some of the essential subsections of, uh, of a method section is the participants subsection, the materials subsection, and the design and procedures. Optionally, you can add an analysis plan in which you talk about the statistical analyses associated with your methods. However, I won't be expecting that for this class. So. Let's go ahead and start off which, about what should be in the participant section of your method section. So to start off, one thing that you should be telling me about your participants is how many participants are there. So in the case of this class, you're going to tell me how many anticipated participants do you have? Is it 100 participants? Is it 200 participants? How many participants? Additionally, who are your participants? In the cases of this class, because it's a research proposal, what I'll be asking you is, who is your population of interest? What kind of participants do you plan to have recruited? Are they uh, CSU students? Are they the average national American? Um, are they people over the age of 40? Are they the people between the ages of 18 to 24? It all depends on who you are defining as your population of interest. So it's an essential piece that you clearly define who your population of interest is for the method section of this paper. Additionally, in the participant subsection, you'll be discussing how you plan on recruiting participants. Remember our entire section on sampling, I expect you to use at least one sampling technique from that uh, lecture. So make sure that if you're having trouble, you go back to that lecture on sampling so that you can tell me how you plan to recruit your participants. Additionally, tell me why um, will these participants be selected? Why um, were these participants selected? Um, if it's relevant, is there a reason why you chose the population of interest? Um, maybe it's because of past literature reviews that you've done that this is generally the population of interest that you're interested. Maybe your study only works on this, this population of interest. The theory that you're interested in only agrees with adolescent populations or um, works with uh, college students of some sort. So there's additionally this component of why you're choosing to um, choose these participants. So remember, in the participants section, there's four components that I'd like to see. How many you plan to recruit, who you plan to recruit, so who is your population of interest, how you plan to recruit them, 
So the, using a sampling technique discussed in the sampling lecture and why you plan, plan to use this uh, population of interest. It might be semi-clear in your introduction, but proceed to tell me why it's interesting. And you can even reference back to your introduction saying, as seen in the introduction or something like that, this is why we chose to recruit these participants. Next, we're gonna be talking about materials. So for the purposes of this class, I also want you to make sure you have at least one good measure that measures your either outcome variable or dependent variable, depending if you're running an experimental or correlational study, um, and uh, kind of what's, what are you using to measure your independent variable or uh, predictor variable. So for this, when you're doing a questionnaire or scale, you need to tell me who the authors of the uh, paper are that developed the scale. Chances are you will not be developing your own scale for this class. You need to find a scale from the literature um, that you think measures your construct of interest. Uh, let's say, for example, your construct of interest for your um, outcome variable is depression. Therefore, you need to tell me what uh, depression scale you plan to use to measure it. For example, the CESD10 is a great depression scale. If you're, you, if you're measuring anxiety as your outcome variable, then the Beck anxiety inventory is a great uh, scale to also tell. And you can always find these measures by doing a standard literature search for the measure of interest. Additionally, you need to tell me why you chose that measure. There should be reasons um, you chose that measure. This might be clear in your introduction again, but it needs to be clear in the method section about why uh, that measure or questionnaire was chosen. Lastly, if you needed to, I'm going to anticipate that you, none of you will need to, but if you needed to modify the scale that you're going to use in your materials section, you need to indicate what you did and why you did it. I don't anticipate this being a thing for your projects though. My guess is you'll just be using the scale of interest. Next is the procedures. And something I wanna make very clear is in this procedure section is that this is the part of the study where you need to make sure your study is replicable. If I had never heard of your study before, I need to make sure that I'm able to replicate your study that you plan to propose. Remember, you'll be writing this in future tense, so write it as if you're going to propose a study. It needs to be clear to me what the study design is and, what, and why you chose that study. So step by step, and I'm gonna give you some clues as to what um, you need in this procedure section. So when you write your procedure section, make sure you're answering all of these questions. So who did what? When did it happen or when is it going to happen? Where did it happen? For example, is it gonna be an online survey? Are you gonna be doing it at Colorado State University? Why, if, if applicable, um, so why did you choose to do it this way? You don't necessarily need to define it at that point, but there might be reasons why you need to do it, you want to do that. And additionally, how? The analysis that you may be doing. This can be in a separate section if you would like it to be. However, you can also just write how you plan to do your, um, how you plan to uh, analyze your variables. Um, this is where you can either choose to do it in the procedure section or you can have a separate an analytic review, in which case you'll use one of those uh, methodologies from our statistical procedures. Uh, lecture where you talk about, you know, will you be performing an ANOVA? Will it be a regression analysis? Again, you don't need to know tons of what, you don't know, need to know the nitty gritty details of what a regression analysis are. However, it is a necessary component that you at least indicate that you will be doing one of those. So if I see that you have two continuous variables, I wanna make sure you're either doing a correlation, a linear regression, a multiple linear regression of some sort, or if you have all categorical variables, then it would be a chi-square test. There's also this idea of the a design. This is optional or it can be blended in with the procedure section. This is essentially where you state what the IVs or the predictor variables, if it's a correlational study, or your dependent variables, or an outcome variable if it's a correlational study. Now remember, I'm a stickler about IVs and DVs versus predictors and outcomes. So if you're running an experimental study, I better see independent variables and dependent variables within your lecture. 
if you're running a correlational study, you better be essentially talking about predictor and outcome variables. I will dock you points if I see the difference, if those two terms are mixed up. So make sure you let me know if you're having troubles with the terminology. Yes, I'm a weird stickler towards these terms. Next, uh, the analysis plan. Again, this is an optional uh, section that we can include. Sometimes papers includes an entire section for the analysis plan. So this is when analyses are more complex in nature. Chances are your analyses won't be totally complex in nature, but for example, if you draw out some sort of model, statistical model, you'll likely need an analysis plan. Um, if you're doing something like a mediation model, or a moderation model, which we talked about in previous lecture, um, then you'll need some sort of um, analysis plan. I'm gonna anticipate for the purposes of this class, you won't need an analysis plan, but if you feel like you need an analysis plan, please feel free to email me and we can discuss how you'll create this analysis plan. So in summary, methods consist of a minimum of three separate sections. Those se sections being one, participants, two, materials, and three, procedures. Additionally, they may optionally include that of design and an analysis plan, depending if you have a complex analysis plan associated with your uh, paper topic. Now remember, because for this class, you're gonna be writing a research proposal, in which case you haven't actually performed the research study. Instead, you're gonna be proposing a research study to me um, you will be writing all of your methods in future tense, whereas normally in a scientific journal article, you'd be writing this in past tense.